What are reactionaries saying about the situation? Okay, here, I'll show you. Here, we'll watch uh, the, the big problem with how we pick juries in the American uh, criminal justice system. I, I don't want to know. I don't know if there's a lot of violence in that. No, he, he, he was in four shootings. He shot three and killed one before this. It wasn't five. It was 19. There is a jury composition that came out already. It's a uh, relatively, it is a uh, relatively diverse. Anyway, um, it's top of the hour. I'm going to run a quick ad break here, a uh, one minute ad break, and then we're going to go back to the, uh, to the actual trial itself. I'm going to cover the screen as best as I can with, I mean, it's just like they keep moving it. So I, I don't know how I will be able to cover the screen. Um, but, uh, here's the ad break, um, now. Well, if he killed white people, it doesn't count. Really? That's what you think? Really? In the, in the state of, I, I already described it in the state of Minnesota. Uh, there, there has never been a conviction of a, uh, the only conviction that we've had in recent years of a police officer killing someone was literally a black police officer killing a white woman. And uh, there has never been a conviction of a white police officer killing a black person. So it's literally the opposite. I would go so far as to say that it only counts when there is a, uh, when there is a white victim. At least according to the facts. Seven of the eight claims outlined in a flyer about Derek Chauvin are partially or completely true based on verifiable evidence. There's a flyer circulating. The internet accurately describes the career of ex-Minneapolis officer. Uh, Minneapolis police officer murdered George Floyd on May 25th. The restraint technique used by Chauvin to murder Floyd was not part of the department's training. Being represented by Tom Kelly, the same attorney who... Got Officer Geronimo Yanis, who murdered Philando Castile, acquitted. Of course, Chauvin shot Ira Latrell Tolls, an unarmed black 21-year-old man in 2008. Chauvin was one of the officers who murdered Wayne Reyes, a Latino man with 16 bullets forced, in, forced into him. A total of 42 rounds were shot off. Chauvin and another police officer were chasing a car in 2005, causing the death of three people, according to Communities United Against Police Brutality. There are 12 police brutality complaints against Chauvin in the Minneapolis Office of Police Conduct. Complaint database. They are listed all as closed, non-public, no discipline. Okay, he did kill George Floyd. That's uh, true. Um, neck restraints and choke holds is uh, that restraint technique used was not part of the MPT training was false. I guess the only one out of all the all that information on the flyer, the only false information is that it is actually a neck restraint. Neck restraints are a part of uh, police protocol up until twenty nine uh, twenty twelve. I think they might have changed it, but. The department policy has permitted officers to use what is considered a non-deadly force option by kneeling on a suspect's neck. Oh, did I forget to run the ad? No, I did run the ad. Wait, no, I didn't. Oh, no, I did run the ad. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, just non-deadly things like fucking putting your neck on someone's, or putting your knee on someone's neck, dude. Just non-deadly things. Anyway, let's... I, I mean, this is how. Taken from would you watch it like this if I did this? I mean, here. Like, would you watch it like this? No, right? This is silly, right? This is crazy. If you could pause, please. And then you see that at approximately 8:29 and 29 seconds uh, p.m., Mr. Floyd is fully placed into the back of the ambulance. Is Hold that on. right? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, please resume. Dude, I'm not going to risk getting banned for a play-by-play -play of this, like, honestly, but here, hold on, I'm going to... I'm going to cover the updates and stuff, but I'm not going to, like... And at that point, if you would pause, please, at 8.29 and about 52 seconds, I It's, believe, like, constantly changing, too. Seconds, you stopped uh, recording, is that right? Yep, yes. Okay. Um... Uh, and you can take that down now. But what did you see after uh, the ambulance pulled away? This is the witness. Um, there was just a bunch of people yelling and, and fighting. And I didn't no, you can't really put a blur effect why, over the screen. Like you're. Hold on. What did you do after you stopped? Um, after you stopped watching outside? I went back to work. And that would have been around about eight thirty. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> Do you remember when your shift ended? Uh, 10 o'clock. And so you worked up until, until 10 o'clock. Yep. Um, do you recall uh, what you saw after you left work that day? Um, tape. There was so much tape everywhere, and they made me, like, instead of going down Chicago to go home, they made me, like, go around and, like, down the street, like, all the way down, I think, like, 35th. Was the, uh, the the scene had crime scene tape around it, yep. and you weren't able to access it. Did you make another uh, recording uh, of that crime scene tape? I think I did. Okay. And at this time, uh, I believe we've already received Exhibit 7, and I'd like to publish Exhibit 7, please. <clears throat> um, yeah, that would be good. Well, you know what? Um, I'm almost finished here. Go ahead. Yeah. If we could just publish Exhibit 7. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That's Exhibit 8. All right. If you could pause, please. And... Uh no, no, there's no reason for a sync command. Look, it's going to end soon anyway. All right, I'm moving on from this, okay? I already told you what they're doing. I already told you what's uh, happening. I've given you a play-by-play -play of uh, what has happened today thus far. There's no reason to continue watching this. Um, it's just it, okay? We're going to move on, all right? Here, here is the jury composition. Hold on, let me just fix this real quick. The composition of the jury and, alter, uh, and alternates in the Derek Chauvin trial, it's nine women uh, and, and five men. The jury is 29% black, 14 mixed race, and 57% white. Uh, Minneapolis is, of course, uh, where it happened, is 18.6% uh, black and 63% white. The Hennepin County, uh, where it moved to, uh, is 13% uh, uh, black and 74% white. Um, so there's 12 people sitting on the jury who serve as alter alternates, uh, for Chauvin's trial of 15th person was selected too. Is it a 14 with alternates? Um, There's a chemist who's a white man in his 20s. Um, okay, we're uh, just, you know, this is, this is, these are the details. I'm going to move on from this. And uh, to be honest, I don't know uh, if justice will be served in this circumstance. It should be open and shut, but all you need is one person to be unconvinced. You know, that... Uh, That's it. For justice not to be served. I don't know what will happen after that, too. Okay. Um, I'm going to change the title as well. Is it verdict today? No. Okay, so we're going to talk about... Uh, we're going to talk about fucking... Uh, uh, incredible takes from a uh, friend of the show Lindsey Graham now okay he's got he's got two really good takes one that i think is creating the so 
as far as like the Georgia election laws goes, we've talked about this before. Um, Brian Kemp signed into law an insane election law in uh, uh, Georgia recently uh, that limits drop boxes, allows early voting cutoff at 5 p.m., prohibits giving drink or food to voters in the line, okay? And apparently, this last part was so fucking stupid that even Lindsey Graham was like, I don't know. Biggest fuss, it prohibits, it makes it a crime to give food or drink to voters waiting in line. Senator, why on earth, if, Amer if Americans are willing to wait in hours to vote, would you make it a crime for people to come and give them a bottle of water? Well, we uh, all I can say is that that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I agree with you there. But uh, in Georgia, you had an explosion of mail-in balloting. Yeah, I wonder why that happened. Oh, because there was a fake pandemic. Maybe that's why. And they are um so that was really fucking uh, that was like a a half reasonable take by lindsey graham who then immediately followed that up in that same interview with a fucking psychotic take because obviously you can't have like you know you know, you'll have one reasonable take and then followed up by why the scamdemic is the reason why black people were doing mail-in ballots and it's unacceptable um guys it's just fucking cry to the mods all day, every day, okay, with the Republicans. Oh, I'm sorry. You, uh, you, you, more black people are able to fucking vote? Well, I guess, uh, we gotta do something about that. Cry to the fucking mods and change the rules of the system one more time. Conservatives never want to fucking, they know that they will not win a fair fight. They hate democracy. They will literally go to lengths and say that, well, it's not a democracy. It's not a direct democracy. It's a democratic republic, which means... You know, we got to have the rule of uh, the tyranny of minority rather than and the minority that we choose, of course, which is conservatives, uh, rather than the tyranny of majority. Right. Um, so obviously they're doing everything in their power to fucking game the system so that uh, what happened never happens again. Um, but beyond that. Um, better have tyranny of the mob instead. Yeah, I mean, uh, the tyranny of majority is called at least in other cultures, a democracy, you know what I mean? Uh, whereas the tyranny of minority is what we have in the United States. <laughs> you are intentionally misleading people. The law is meant for people to stop bribing voters and line people bribe voters by giving them something that while they wait, stop lying to people. Hmm. That's really interesting that you say that because, uh, giving them food and then telling them to vote a certain way is illegal. That is called electioneering. It is literally illegal already. Uh, giving them food, on the other hand, because they have to wait for fucking seven hours on a line to exercise their duty, their civic duty, the, the allowance given to them by fuck the Constitution, uh, is not illegal and should not be illegal. Uh, it is fucking psychotic to try to uh, stretch so far that you would consider that to be illegal. Yeah. But uh, that says a lot about you, that you are immediately suspicious of someone who is being nice to others. Um, because you are a piece of shit. Just remember that. Oh, by the way, speaking of electioneering, uh, Donald Trump literally had electioneering built into his campaign where he had poll watchers who literally got fucking arrested and kicked out of polling stations because they were harassing people while wearing Trump gear. And conservatives were absolutely mad about that. They were like, oh, what the fuck? They're kicking away Trump voters from the polling stations. Like, bitch, if, you, if I know that you're a Trump voter at a polling station, that means you already are violating the law, okay? There are rules around uh th there are rules designated so that i don't know if i'm a fucking uh, poll worker i should never know that you're a trump voter because you can't wear your trump merchandise you can't wear any political merchandise to the polls a lot of you are like fucking 12 so you've never actually voted or left this so you don't want to vote uh, so you have no understanding of this but this is the this, this is how it works if you ever voted they'll tell you like do not fucking wear any political merchandise the polls.
Okay? What's wrong with a serious debate? So if I tell a poor neighborhood of poor blacks to go and vote, but don't worry, we'll give you free food. Are you saying that that's not electioneering? First of all, I mean, I'm going to ban you for being a disgusting scumbag, okay? Um, but why are you uh, assuming... After all of one, why are you assuming that, like, these black people are going to vote a certain way? No, that's not electioneering, you fucking idiot. The, this notion that you're, you think that, like, poor blacks are going to be persuaded. Holy shit, please. Oh my god, dude. Fucking, what a waste of fucking space, dude. Whole... I can't even fucking talk about this. We're moving on. Giving poor blacks food. What about poor whites? What if you're giving poor whites food? Is that electioneering then? No, right? Because uh, poor whites are voting in the way that you want them to, I guess. Oh my god, dude. Oh. What a pathetic existence that must be. Holy shit. of these shootings about assault weapons and especially about large capacity magazines, which a lot of studies show contribute to these mass killings. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong about debates. As a matter of fact, I would challenge uh, Senator Schumer to bring the assault weapons ban to the floor of the United States Senate. It won't get 50 votes, much less 60. I own an AR-15. If there's a natural disaster uh, in South Carolina where the cops can't protect my neighborhood, my house will be the last one that the gang will come to because I can defend myself. What gang, motherfucker? Like, what gang? Oh, there's a roving gang of people in South Carolina that uh, come out after, uh, you know, natural disasters and... They're looking for flesh. They're looking for meat. But uh, they know in this hypothetical scenario of, uh, uh, that, I, that I've made up in my mind palace with these sexy ass men who uh, know how to dance real well. They're going to be coming in oiled up, breaking my door down and saying, Senator Lindsay... <laughs> I can't. Okay, I'm done. I can't do this. All right. It's just, they're coming. They're coming for me. Okay, they're coming. These old, burly men are coming in a gang to do some sexy stuff to me. They are led by Lil Nas X. Okay, you saw what he did to the devil. And they're going to do the same to me. Like, what is this fucking fantasy, dude? Uh, that, like, there's a natural disaster. People get together to do gang uh, violence, okay? And they are going into everyone's houses, but those uh, 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 those gangsters uh, that are trying to do violence, well, that this roving gang is gonna have the knowledge that Lindsey Graham has an AR-15 and therefore avoid his house. Or maybe... What actually ends up happening in the aftermath of a uh, uh, horrible uh, natural disaster is a, a sense of shared purpose, a community, people getting together and trying to survive. That's usually what happens, you know. Uh, but uh, in Lindsey Graham's fantasy and in the minds of so many psychopaths, so many conservative psychopaths, there's, uh, you know, gangs of people that are trying to kill me. Uh, you don't have to have an AR-15, but if you, if you have one lawfully, I think you should be allowed to keep it. Most of these problems have, uh, have a lot to do with mental health. Count me in for addressing that issue. Red flag laws exist in 19 states. There's some things we can do, but at the end of the day, if you think uh, an assault weapons ban is what the country needs, bring it to the... The funniest part about this is that, like, Lindsey Graham is not gonna fucking shoot anybody okay like he's not well you think lindsey graham's gonna be like all right the gangs are here like let's say 
that a natural disaster happens, which is very commonplace now. Uh, shouts out the climate change. And then let's say that after that, there's a gang like Mad Max style individuals decide to fucking get together and, um, you know, look for fucking Lindsey Graham's house, I guess, which is impossible and not going to happen. But let's say that's happening. The final part of this hypothesis or this uh, hypothetical uh, uh, story that he's come up with is Lindsey Graham shooting a bunch of gang members that are trying to assault him and break into his house, which is probably the most impossible part about this. What would end up happening is like, if he has like a black conservative neighbor uh, that uh, walks over to knock on his uh, door in the aftermath of a natural disaster to like bring food over, you know, to check in on them. Lindsey Graham ends up shooting himself in the fucking face with his AR-15 if he actually has one. That's what will actually happen, okay? Like, his black conservative neighbor walks over from his McMansion over to fucking Lindsey Graham's McMansion to say, hey, what's going on? I hope you're all right in there. Boom! Blasted right in the fucking face. Murders himself. It's great. It's fucking so psychotic. But this is how conservatives operate. Dervon, uh, Kurenberg, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. This is how conservatives operate, okay? This is a, a very common fantasy that they have. Anyone who doesn't realize this hasn't uh, listened to enough conservatives. Like, this is what is called a legal kill. They fucking talk about this shit all the goddamn time. Anne? Anne? Is that a bird? I heard a bird. Go check. My mom put a, uh, like a bird feeder. I heard a bird singing. No, I just thought maybe it was a hummingbird or something. She went and got a bird feeder and shit. And by the way, anyway, uh, sorry, I just, uh, it was a brief aside there, but, um, so what ended up happening, uh, this is exactly what happened with Kyle Rittenhouse. Like he played into the conservative fantasies of like getting a confirmed legal kill and, uh, you know what happened. And then, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse happened. So it's not chicken. Leave it alone. Yeah. It's not a bird, it's a hippopotamus. Don't get tricked. Um, Biden considering gun control executive action, attempting to decipher incoherent Cardi B tweets. I can't watch this can all this shit. Ted Cruz, Kamala Harris has one option to handle the border mess. So, um, Kamala, um, excuse me, uh, Kamala Harris's uh, appointment to take over the border. Leader McCarthy over on the Senate side, he said that VP Harris is now the point person for the Biden border crisis. Then Senator Harris, when she was senator, compared ICE to the KKK, introduced legislation to reduce detention beds by 50%, said CBP holding kids longer than 72 hours was inhumane. Does she stand by all of that? I love when Kevin McCarthy unironically is doing more fucking accountability politics than like the entirety of the Democratic Party on the Democratic ad administration. Like, just saying, his question. like, this is true. Everything he said is true. It's literally true. When Kamala Harris said it, it was true. And uh, it's great that, uh, you know, the, the wonderful um, immigration activist Kevin McCarthy is uh, advocating for the right things. And I'm sure you have questions too, but I also would ask you, should she be given a chance to do this and see how she does? Well, I got to say my reaction to that appointment is, is wow, Joe Biden really doesn't like Kamala Harris. Um, this border crisis is the biggest political mess Joe Biden has. It threatens to derail the entire administration. So what does he do? He looks to his vice president and says, you take it. It's your problem now. And, and listen, unfortunately, 
she is not going to be able to solve this crisis. Why? Because they've created this crisis, and they've created this crisis because of their political partisan commitments that they can't back away from. So why are we having this crisis at the border? If there's someone who has created a crisis at the border, it's conservatives. There would be no border crisis if we used some of our resources, and we have plenty, to adequately take care of refugees and economic migrants coming into this country. Instead, we choose to vilify them. That's the reason why it is a crisis, when it's not a real crisis. The crisis is how much cruelty uh, we are choosing to subject them to. That's it. Order. Because when Joe Biden got elected, the first thing he did was stop construction of the border wall. Actually, I'd say the most responsible are the fucking cartels. Hmm, interesting. Um, I wonder what kind of destabilization efforts uh, by, I don't know, an imperial power in the region has uh, created a situation where there's a power vacuum and no fucking solid infrastructure could ever be built and governments can't be fucking launched on top of that. Uh, and therefore, uh, within that power vacuum, you have literal fucking cartels take control of entire regions and and uh, even uh, entire governments. Hmm, I wonder how that happened. I, it's probably on its own. Why? Well, I don't know. Maybe because uh, fucking brown people just can't control themselves. That's probably how it happened, right? Is, you know. Oh, wait, never mind. Uh, fuck. Uh, Pepe la CIA. Oh. He reinstituted catch and release, and the failed policy, so that now when we detain illegal immigrants, we let them go, we give them a court date sometime in the future, and many of them never show up. And he ended the remain in Mexico policy, which was this incredibly successful foreign policy accomplishment, where the Trump administration had negotiated with Mexico that illegal immigrants from Central America would remain in Mexico while their asylum proceedings were moving forward. All of those had produced real success. But because the Democrats campaign on saying ICE is evil, securing the border is wrong, because the Democrats support open borders, Kamala Harris doesn't have anything to do other than go down there and let everybody go. I mean, that's the only option that is consistent. That'd be devastating. I mean, oh my God, look at all these dangerous criminals, dude. Can you imagine letting... I, this is my favorite part about this, when they, like, show people at the border and shit, or show people going through processing, and it's like, what, are we supposed to uh, uh, feel like these people are a threat or something? ...with the political promises she's made, and I'll tell you, representing the state of Texas, we are seeing illegal immigrants being released in Harlingen, Texas. The illegal immigrants they're releasing are testing positive for COVID-19 at a seven times higher rate. Dude, the worst, oh God, that's the most scummy part about it. Bitch, if Texas literally believed that COVID is a real thing, the governor would not have deleted mask mandates like last month. You gigantic shit lord, you fucking piece of shit. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I just, uh, I, 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 like this shit fucking sucks so bad than the U.S. population. It is a humanitarian crisis, it's a public health crisis, and it's a national security crisis. They blame the Trump administration. I'm sure you've heard that already. You're going there tomorrow, Senator Cordon, your, your fellow t uh, Texas senator. Uh, when do you think Kamala Harris goes? Or President Biden? I, you know, I have no idea. They, they show a photo of these people, right? And make it seem like they're a threat. Like, that's the implication. Um... Uh, and yet, the dude who had the fucking flex cuffs and his mother, who was there apparently, were both released uh, and, and were not convicted of anything, okay, like this week. Like, the motherfucker was fully kitted out and had flex cuffs in his hands, but that guy's a patriot when he went to the Capitol riots. Yeah. Whereas... Whereas these guys, all I mean, these are the real threat. These are the real scary people, dude. Holy shit. Watch out. Fucking kids coming over train tracks and shit. Union, who I know very well. Uh, we're going to actually tonight I'm headed down to the border and I'm bringing 18 senators. So I'm, I'm, I'm bringing 18 senators to go down to the border. We're going to the facilities. We're meeting with the Border Patrol. We're meeting with the Border Patrol Union, who I know very well. Uh, we're going to inspect the, the, those facilities and, and see them directly. And, and I'll tell you, we invited Fox News to embed with us. We invited ABC News to embed with us. And the Biden administration has said, hell no. 
They mm. will not allow reporters anywhere near. So they're blocking. When 18 senators show up, the Biden administration is saying no reporter can show up because, and this is their argument, and it, it really is laughable. That <laughs> ah, this is so fucking stupid, dude. Oh, God, dude. That's great. Oh, I wonder why they're wearing Biden merch instead of Trump merch. Why the fuck would they wear Trump merch when Trump is literally like, y'all are rapists and, and drug dealers and we're going to murder you? They, they say that reporters, there, there's too big a risk of COVID. That, that okay, they're... here's the take. Um, this is so fucking silly to talk about over and over again, but here's the take. And why Democrats are fucking up in this story as well. The entire conversation should be revolving around whether these people are genuinely a fucking threat or not and what the many benefits of allowing them to come into the country legally and allowing ease of pass or ease of access in their passage rather than going along with the meme that they're dangerous criminals and then talking about like how many of them we are uh, uh turning away and using that as a fucking badge of honor because that's what the democrats are doing right now and when you say, well, we're turning 70% of them away, like you keep saying it's open borders, but like we're turning 70% of them away, you're already admitting a false premise that they're operating off of, which is that these guys are dangerous fucking criminals and they are violating laws. If your goal is to literally make this process easier and show the rest of the country that these aren't criminals, but instead just regular people like you and I, but in much more dire circumstances that they're trying to escape desperately, you should never even entertain the we're fucking turning away 70% of the uh, people that are coming in. You should just straight up say these people are not fucking criminals. Okay? They are, they are just people escaping horrific conditions that we as the American government have, you know, been responsible for uh, subjecting them to those horrific conditions. This is Ellis Island. This is how America was founded. This is what makes America great, okay? And we are going to do the American thing, okay? If you want to, you know, create a fucking uh, sense of, of uh, patriotism off of it as well. A little bit of false history, but what are you going to do? America was founded on some other principles as well. But... It, you know, uh, going, uh, defending your actions by saying, oh, well, we're just fucking, uh, we're just, uh, you know, we're, we're only bringing in like 30% of the people comes along with the, uh, saying that we're only letting in 30% of the people comes along with, uh, the, the acceptance of the false premise that, you know, some of these people or a lot of these people should not be let into the country at all. So you are basically legitimizing the Republican position and adopting it. It's terrible. It's a very, very stupid way to uh, argue. But that's how Democrats have chosen to defend themselves. It's not great. That, that right. if there's a cameraman, suddenly it's a COVID crisis, never mind the Donna facility, which they won't allow reporters into. The Donna facility, its capacity is 250 people. It currently has nearly 4,000 people in it. That is 1,500% in excess of its capacity. There's a reason they don't want reporters in there. It's not COVID. The reason they don't want reporters in there is because they don't want the American people to realize the absolute train wreck of a policy that the Biden administration well, is implementing. Uh, Senator, you can let them know we've been working for a year nonstop. Yeah. Uh, two more topics quickly, Dan. Well, I wanted to ask you about the other thing that's happening, and this is a big deal yesterday. Um this motherfucker said, why aren't you criticizing Biden uh, for locking up kids and you only criticize the fucking Ted Cruz? You fucking libs are so hypocritical. While I was on a rant about how I think Biden is fucking up. Like, literally, he did not even listen. He created a fucking sock account, came in, waited, like, uh, for the, the 10 minutes to be able to tweet uh, or, or write in the chat. And instead of, in that 10 minutes, educating himself on my positions, at least, in the 10 minutes that he waited... Instead of listening in to what I was saying, he was just like, no, nah, la, 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 I can't hear you, you 
Why do you love Biden's uh, immigration policy? H.R. 1, which is uh, the bill that the Democrats passed yes. in the House to basically completely change uh, voting rights in, in America. There was a hearing on it yesterday. What do you think is the most important thing for Americans to know about that bill? So I think this is the most single most dangerous bill being considered by Congress right now. It, it, it is the Corrupt Politicians Act because it is designed to entrench corrupt politicians in office and to keep Democrats in power for a hundred years. What does it do? It has the federal government take over all elections. It repeals virtually all of the common sense state integrity laws for election integrity. So for example, 29 states have voter ID laws, including my home state of Texas. The Corrupt Politicians Act repeals every one of them, says it's illegal to require identification to vote. It, it, the, the Corrupt Politician Act also mandates universal mail-in voting everywhere for no reason whatsoever, and it mandates ballot harvesting, which, which 31 states have made illegal. That's paid political operatives that say go to a nurse. Motherfucker, ballot harvesting, which is illegal in the way that it was done in California, was being conducted by the state GOP, okay? Like, the California uh, Republican Party was literally doing false ballot drops. And when they were caught, and that there is a fucking fine for it, okay? When there was a, and they, there was a criminal, like, there was serious legal repercussions for that. Donald Trump literally turned around and said, nah, keep doing it. <laughs> like, and they do, and they always do it. ...home, and they collect hundreds of ballots. And, and it is, it is mm -hmm. the single most likely circumstance for voter fraud because those paid operatives... They, they can go to vulnerable seniors in nursing homes who may not be in a condition to make choices. If the seniors vote in a way they don't like, they can throw their ballot away. And, and the Democrats are trying to... Yeah, Ted Cruz knows all about this because that's literally what a Republican did in North Carolina and got caught. So... I just, I, I don't understand. Did anything come of the uh, fake ballot box in California? Uh, I don't think so. Isn't that a reason why it should be illegal? I don't like ballot harvesting. Uh, I don't. I personally don't like it. But uh, I understand why it exists to make it fucking easy, as easy as possible to collect as many votes as possible. I think it should be nonpartisan. Um, and the reality is that... Uh, it's still illegal to do those things that he's talking about. And when people do it, they get caught, which is why if you, you have to weigh the benefits and the consequences and the negative side effects is that, uh, someone could literally just grab a bunch of Democrat neighborhood votes and fucking toss them in the trash. Okay. But, uh, the positives are that, uh, more people are, making it easier for others to be able to vote and participate in the democratic process. So, yeah, picking up and dropping off your grandma's ballot shouldn't be illegal. Though. No, I, of course not. And it ranges from that to literally having state uh, parties uh, set uh, drop-off points, specifically. So, um, it's 100% legal here in California, brother. I worked hard walking houses in 2018. No. It's legal to collect people's votes and cast it for them, making it as easy as possible. It's illegal to make it seem like you have an official state-mandated ballot drop-off point that is created by the fucking Republican Party, which is what the Republican Party uh, in California was doing. We don't, we don't all have IDs and it's kind of hard to get them. No reason to limit who can vote when voter fraud is so low anyway. Europeans don't understand. They're like, why can't everybody vote with a fucking ID? It doesn't make sense. Because, motherfucker, 
when you live in a functional country, you get identification papers at a certain age, okay? For you oftentimes for free or for a very low cost. You don't have to have a car, you don't have to have you don't have to go to a DMV. Like you literally just get some form of identification that you can use. I know. Nufus Yuzdan in Turkey is what you get. It's different than a driver's license. You can literally get it's how would you say Nufus Yuzdan in Can't you use a passport? Yeah, dude. Let's go ask poor people who don't have driver's licenses. Yeah, like an ID card, basically. Yeah. Let's ask poor people who can't get driver's licenses because, like, that process is expensive. So it's some form of fucking voter suppression in that regard to go get a passport, which is way harder to get and way more expensive. If every single person could very easily get identification papers, then I don't have a problem with the, this sort of, uh, this process. Expand those opportunities for fraud. And I'll tell you even more fundamentally than that, Dana, what it does is it automatically registers anyone who interacts with the government, anyone who gets a welfare check, an unemployment check, anyone who gets a driver's license, anyone who goes to a public university. The Democrats know that will result in millions of illegal immigrants being registered to vote, and that is their objective, is to get millions of illegal immigrants to vote, and it also strikes down all the state laws limiting felons, limiting criminals from voting. This law- If you get mail, you have identification papers, go get a fucking ID, you cheap ass. Bro, I don't know what the exact percentage of people are uh, that don't have an ID in the United States. But there's a fucking reason why voter ID literally gets implemented in areas where DMVs have shut down, like in states where, uh, you know, representatives will look at DMVs in certain areas, okay, shut them down, and then turn around and be like, we're implementing a voter ID protocol. Why do you think they do that? Why do you think that happens? Okay. Why do you think they cut off? Any way that someone who wants to vote uh, from being able to easily get uh, that, that documentation that has a fucking long timeline to begin with. I wonder why they do that. law mandates that when anyone leaves prison they can immediately vote so so the democrats have decided apparently what america needs is more murderers more rapists more child getting a photo id so you can vote is easy unless you're poor black latino or elderly houston is while anthony settles carries an expired text identification card his social security card an old student id from the university of houston where he studied math and physics decades ago what he does not have was the one thing he needs to vote this presidential election a current texas photo id for Settles to get one of those, his name has to match his birth certificate, and it doesn't. In 1964, when he was 14, his mother married and changed his last name. After tax Texas passed a new voter ID law, officials told Settles he had to show them his name change certificate from 1964 to qualify for a new identification card to vote. Now, this is one example. Obviously, this is not uh, the, the most common reason. But there are a multitude of problems for so many black and brown individuals um, in regards to being able to fucking get an ID card. Okay? And uh, those problems oftentimes don't exist in wealthier neighborhoods or states that, uh, uh, you know, cater to uh, certain kinds of communities. So, or, or fucking countries that are fully functional. And that is... Part of the reason why so many chatters are like, I don't get it. It's so easy to get an idea. I just don't understand.
Anyway. <sighs> Percentage of people who lack a government-issued photo ID from 2008 to 2012. 18% uh, of young voters. 15% uh, of low-income voters earning less than or equal to $35,000. Dollars a year. All citizens, 11% of all citizens of voting age lack a photo ID. 25% of African American voters hmm, lack a photo ID. 16% of Hispanic voters lack a photo ID. Really interesting. So, um, one out of every four black person that is eligible to vote doesn't have a photo ID. I wonder how, uh, I wonder, I wonder if, uh, Republicans knew that when they were, uh, deciding this. Yes, the number is 35,000. The, the process of getting an identification, the process of getting ID is also a difficult one because it's a long one. Guys, listen, I, I sit at home and I Twitch stream, right? And it still took me fucking months to finally get my registration in order. Like months. I waited months so my registration worked. Um, it is a couple days long process to be able to go out and get a fucking ID. So just saying, just get an ID, you fucking bums, lol. It's not that easy, especially when you're working every goddamn day. It's easy to just say it, just get it, lol. But it's not that easy. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, the cost of getting an idea are between $75 and $175. Yep. Only, oh, here, the other part is, yeah. 8% of white people that are of voting age lack a photo ID. 25% of black citizens of voting age lack a photo ID. Maybe that's why so many fucking people in my chat are saying, like, just get a fucking ID. I don't understand it. Okay, imagine if you work at a meat pro meat packing center and something, uh, you think they they're gonna let you take time off to get a photo ID? Hell no, he'd lose your job for just asking. Yep. They're good with Democrats getting embedded in HR one. The voter rights bill are greater hurdles for third parties to confront. The Democrats don't want a competitive democracy. They want to work the duopoly without outside challenges about war and peace and Wall Street power. What? What is this? But it contains several poison pills for democracy and opposition parties like the Green Party. Most alarmingly, it quintuples the amount of money Green, par Green presidential campaigns will be required to raise to qualify from 5,000 each to 20 uh, of 20 states to 25,000 per state. Wait, what the fuck? Why? What is there a big problem with fucking third party voting in this country or some shit? That's so stupid. <sighs> They're such scumbags, dude. All right, it's really fucking hot in here. I gotta turn on the AC. Holy shit. Out of all my friends that didn't vote, I had two black friends that couldn't because they lacked an ID and didn't have 60 bucks to get a new one. Yep. Vote ID laws make sense if and only if we make the ID required, free, and accessible to everyone. Yeah, I, I've said this before. 
That's why a lot of Europeans do not understand the photo ID conversation where they would like literally say like, I don't get it. Why the fuck can't you have a fucking photo ID? It's so hot in here Child today. molesters voting, and they've made the very cynical decision that millions of illegal immigrants and millions of criminals voting is going to benefit Democrats and keep them in power. This is a very, well, it, very it, it got off the ground in the House. We'll see whether or not it goes anywhere in the Senate. Quickly, sir, I just want to yeah. play a clip from you yesterday uh, on the Hill. You came out to talk to reporters, and this exchange went the following way. Uh, yeah, when I'm talking to the TV camera, I'm not going to wear a mask, and all of us have been immunized, so. You make us feel better. Uh, you, you're welcome to step away if you like. The whole, the whole point of a vaccine, CDC guidance is what we're following. What happened after that? We did not see on camera. Well, that part that particular cameraman went and left, and he, and he decided he didn't want to be at the press conference. That's fine. He's he, he's welcome to make that choice. You know, at some point, it, it is a little silly. I, I, I got to say, if you turn on the TV on any given day and watch, say, the White House press conference with Jen Psaki. To be fair, I would unironically want Ted Cruz to mask up and not for COVID purposes, if you know what I mean. Like, I would, I think Ted Cruz should be required, even after the pandemic is over, I think Ted Cruz should be required to wear a mask on at all times. And you know why. You know why. Like, I, I think what, I think his face it constitutes a clear and present danger to all people. Uh, it is uh, basically a weaponization of ugly. And that... Uh, he should always wear a mask, and I would probably leave instead of looking at his face as well. I'm just saying. She hasn't worn a mask a single day, and you didn't see any petulant reporters throwing a fit and running, screaming out of the room. Uh, it's particularly absurd when every senator standing there has been vaccinated. And, and, and it, at some point, it just becomes theater. It just becomes... A, a, a virtue signal as people wear two, three, four masks. Listen, I'm not someone who says never wear a mask. I think you should use common sense precautions, but, but people have gotten pretty crazy about this stuff. Senator, thank you for your time. Uh, we went through a Fuck lot. Ted we'll Cruz, we... but he's kind of right on this one point. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. Being vaccinated does not constitute that you have no COVID, but uh, if you're on a fucking, if you're on camera and you're talking into a fucking microphone, like that's not a uh, that's not a uh, uh, a a standard that you uh, apply anyone to at that stage. Specifically, when you're like around um, vaccinated people, like fucking, as he correctly pointed out, Jan Pisaki does not fucking do that. It's annoying that uh, I know he can still be a carrier chat. No, it's not. If Ted Cruz was walking down the fucking street randomly or was indoors randomly and was not wearing a mask and someone said, can you please put on a mask? And he said, no, that's different than Ted Cruz walks up to a fucking podium, takes off his mask to speak into a microphone. You can still be a carrier. That's not what we're talking about. You can absolutely still be a carrier, but even in the fucking peak of COVID, the expectation that, like, anyone who was fucking talking to a microphone had to wear a mask all the goddamn time was not there, so it's fucking silly to just, like, try to call him out on this. It's literally a non-issue that uh, you would not be even talking about if it wasn't for Ted Cruz being so horrifying to look at. I apologize for um, not. Uh, I apologize once again for not issuing a trigger warning before getting before showing you footage of Theodore Jebediah Raphael Cruz. I will not do that again. That was disgusting of me to do so. I subjected you to such a foul uh, thing, and for that I apologize. Okay. His name is not even Theodore, by the way. Oh, here it is. 
It's time, boys. Welcome it's back. time for liberals versus conservatives. Middle ground on who is censored more. Are you excited for me to censor the gray names in the chat by banning them for saying stupid shit in the process of this? I am going to be tweeting this out because uh, people have been waiting for a long time on this. And it's also top of the hour every hour. It's time for a 60 second ad break, boys. So I'm definitely going to do that. Hold on. Let's do the let's do the ad right now before the video even starts. Early ad. Early ad, boys. Early ad. Okay. <sighs> React Lord Pogger. Who gets censored more in 1987? George Orwin, conservatives or libs? It's React Lord time. www.twitch.tv slash Hasanabi. Let's go, baby. It's fucking brain rot time. Okay, it's freaking brain rot time, baby. Did we watch John Oliver? I don't think there was a John Oliver this week. Can you wait 30 minutes? I have a meeting. Okay, yeah, fine. I'll just wait for you, Chatter. Back to middle ground. And thank you to our sponsor, Dashlane, for making this episode possible. Make sure you stick around after the episode for a special offer from Dashlane. But first, <coughs> here is middle ground, free speech versus censorship. This is going to be so stupid, dude. Take, for example, like white supremacy. They don't go away because you censored them. Are they going to stop being a white supremacist? I don't give a f I do feel safer. Tech platforms play a big part in facilitating hate today. Twitter, specifically, has banned a number of different conservative accounts, not just the president. Well, they can do whatever they want. They're private businesses. I think that people should be able to say whatever they want online. However, I think that there should also be consequences. The president of one of the most powerful countries in the world doesn't have access to social media. I think platforms have a right to moderate content. We really have to be able to discern who gets a voice and what they're able to say. We need people in the conservative field to fight for our right to be conservative. As somebody who has experienced censorship, it ends up generating these chambers in which these ideas go completely unchallenged. And everybody kind of Bro, conservatives don't fucking, conservatives don't like seek out echo chambers because they're getting censored. I mean, some literally are relegated to other platforms because they cannot play by the rules. But conservatives literally love fucking safe spaces as well. Like they just, they want to uh, unsuccessfully in most uh, circumstances, turn everything into a conservative echo chamber has to ask themselves, should everybody really be able to say what they want to say? Hi, I'm Leah Thomas. Um, I am a writer and the founder of Intersectional Environmentalists, which is an online environmental media hub. Hi, I'm Lawrence. Uh, I'm a public policy analyst for San Bernardino County. Hi, I'm Bennett Kelly. I'm the founder of the Internet Law Center and I'm an attorney who represents victims of online harassment. I'm Michael, uh, I'm 30, I'm conservative, and I work in finance. Uh, my name is Jerome, I'm a political science student, I am 21, and I'm originally from Massachusetts. Oh dude, I already banned this guy. Oh my god, it, it's gonna be really funny when Jerome says his personal experience with censorship was when he was on the Hassan Abi stream. And got banned for saying, you know, um, why can't we uh, make it legal to shoot blacks on sight or some shit? You know what I mean? Like. Hello, I'm Joseph. I'm a, an accountant and I'm working towards my CPA and I'm a part time poker player. The prompt is. The right is more censored. Yeah, than I'm sure that's what he said. First of all, they. People say that shit in my chat all the time, you fucking moron. 
And uh, secondly, that was clearly a fucking joke. Uh, and, and finally, I, I don't think